Hi everybody, welcome back to another video. I know it's been a few days since I've had a chance to make one of these. Uh, just been a lot of personal things going on in the background that have required my attention. Uh, it's not that I've, you know, stopped enjoying making these videos. I mean, it's not that I ran out of topics. I've got a list of like 100 different things I could do. Uh, like I said, there's just been other things I've had to dedicate my time and effort into. Uh, this episode is going to be the first in a series where I talk about my time in the Army, and I thought I would start by... Uh, kind of talking about the background to what led me to join the Army. Uh, you know, there was a lot of good reasons for me joining. There was a lot of selfish reasons. Uh, like anything else in my life, there's there's two sides to the story. Uh, you know, growing up in the 80s, I was your typical red, white, and blue American kid. Very patriotic. You know, it was a different time then. Um, you know, I, I watched a lot of cartoons as a kid, but my two favorites were the Transformers and... G.I. Joe, the real American hero. Now, G.I. Joe had been around since, you know, the 60s and kind of had gone through this phase where it was popular and then it kind of faded out and then it kind of made a came, you know, comeback in the early 80s. Um, I love the cartoon show. I haven't seen it since I was eight years old. I mean, you know, someday I'm going to have to get around to rewatching all of them. But I think I actually like the comic book more. It was very gritty and, you know, surprisingly contrasted versus the, the TV show, which I always thought was kind of funny. It's like, this is America's greatest, you know, the best of the best, and they can't hit the side of a barn. But anyway, um, so, you know, I loved the G.I. Joe stuff growing up as a kid. I had a bunch of the toys, um, you know, I didn't have a really big military background. I mean, my, my grandfather on my father's side was in the Italian army in World War II and was a, a prisoner of war actually for five years. <clears throat> my grandmother's brother was, uh, you know, U.S. Army Air Corps in India. And uh, I think my grandfather's brother was called up, but he never actually went. He made it as far as, like, training in California. And I guess that was about the time that the war ended. Uh, so it's not like, you know, I had, like, a family tradition like a lot of people have. Uh, but, you know, like, like I said, as a kid, typical 80s kid, red, white, and blue, and very patriotic. So it was something I thought about, but I never really said anything because I didn't take it seriously. I didn't think anybody else would take it seriously. Uh, you know, so I just kind of kept it to myself. But, I mean, when I was younger... Uh, I never really, to be honest, I, I never had a pinpoint idea what I wanted to do with my life. I mean, when I was very young, I thought about being a vet because I love cats and dogs, you know. And even though I was at a very young age, I started to realize, you know, I might have to operate on, on them and put them to sleep. And even though I was too young to really understand the concept of death, I knew I wouldn't have the heart for that. Um, you know, I had a great man as a teacher in third grade who was kind of a, a hero to me, and, and he was, you know... Uh, I don't say mentor, but I mean, you know, just a positive force in my life and in countless other lives, all the other people he teached, uh, taught, whatever, <laughs> uh, you know, just a difficult time in my life. And, and I really thought as I got older, you know, I'd like to be a teacher, uh, you know, I'd like to pay, pay it forward or whatever that expression is like you know, what, what was given to me, give it back to somebody else. I figured if I could make a difference in somebody's life, the way he had in mind, that it would be worth it. You know, unfortunately, once I got to about junior high school, I really started having trouble with math. Uh, now, I can do a budget. You know, I can balance a checkbook, no problem. I go to the grocery store. Your basic math, I'm fine. When you start throwing, like, letters and numbers together, I, I lose it. So probably from about the time of junior high on, I really had struggled with that a lot. Uh, suffice to say, if I was in that movie Stand and Deliver with, you know, Lou Diamond Phillips and uh, what's his name? Uh, I'm drawing a blank here. I, you know, I, I would have failed out. So, uh Really, my options kind of limited by that. Uh, but, you know, right after high school, I didn't I didn't want to go to college. I really didn't even know what I wanted to do yet, which has kind of been a, a recurring theme that I've kind of dealt with in my life. I've, I've always known what I didn't want to do, but I've kind of struggled as far as what I wanted to do. Um, now, I did go to school uh, at, at the State University of New York in Old Westbury after high school. And the funny thing is, like, when I did go... I was a really good student. It was like, whoa, where the heck did that come from? <laughs> where, you know, why wasn't I that during high school? Uh, maybe it had to do with the fact that, you know, I, I was half paying for it. I was working full time uh, at a bank as a teller, and then my dad was helping me with the rest of it. Maybe that was a, a driving factor in it. Uh, like I said, did really well, but again, flunked with the math classes. So, you know, in order to, to select a major, obviously you have to get through these basic math classes. And since I couldn't, I was kind of stuck in this dead end spiral. Um, I said, I, I was just, uh, I was working at the bank, you know, I was young and dumb and, you know, hanging around with my friends, hanging around with my girlfriend at the time, wasn't really thinking a lot about my future, didn't have a clear pl you know, plan or a path ahead. Um, unlike, a, unlike, I would say, 
75% or better of people that age, I, I just, I really still didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. You know, I, I had a lot of struggle with that. Uh, and, and it's something I, I quasi still struggle with, but that's, that's a story for another video. Anyway, um, you know, so here I was, I was just kind of working. I was going to school as much as I could, but you know, again, I was approaching that brick wall where it's like, well, I couldn't take any classes toward a major, even if I had decided what that major was until I could get through the math classes. Um, so I was, kind of, you know, I had odd jobs here and there. And I just remember back in 97, a movie came out. It's called Starship Troopers, uh, you know, based on the book from Paul uh, Verhoeven, I think is his name. Love that movie. Got me so pumped. Like it, that silly as it sounds is one of the reasons, one of the many reasons I joined the army. I was like, I want that camaraderie. I want that teamwork. Granted, that movie does have a lot of symbolism with fascism, which I'm completely against. But there were other aspects of the movie that, you know, I really liked the soundtrack, the story. Great movie. You know, don't, don't get me wrong. Uh, but that came out in 97. I mean, I didn't join the military until uh, 2000. So there's still, you know, a, a big gap in there. But um, a lot of things were going on in my life. I didn't have the easiest life growing up. Um, didn't have the worst, but, you know, I, I've always known a lot. People have had it 10 times worse than I have, but it's never made my life easier. You know, I, I still went through difficult times. Um, so I was not your typical teenager growing up. You know, like I said, working, still kind of living at home with my grandfather. Uh, my grandmother had passed in 97, so it was just kind of, you know, us two bachelors, you know. <laughs> so, um, you know, and I just had a lot of difficulty at that period of my life, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. So um, things happened. And we got to the end of um, 1999, and my dad, who had been down in Texas, uh, you know, he had moved down there in 89 for work, uh, you know, didn't really see him that often. He'd come back home every once in a while, and, you know, we'd, we'd get together and talk, but it was, it was weird for me. I mean, the whole situation was just odd, you know, because he had been gone, and I'd grown up. I mean, my, my grandfather was there, my stepdad was there, but it was just this, this weird situation that I, I don't really want to get into that whole spiel, but it's kind of, it was a weird situation. Um, you know, and he would ask me, what were you doing? What do you want to do with your life? You know, and, and I just, I, I didn't know. So long story short, um, the end of 99, I decided, you know, he came up, we had this long father and son talk, and he sold me on how Texas was this paradise and, you know, I wasn't doing anything with, with my life, which I wasn't, you know, but everyone I knew, my family, my friends, everybody was there in New York, you know, my dad was in Texas, but I mean, I didn't know anybody down there. Well, anyway, long story short, I, I didn't think about it very long, you know, you're young, you know, but I made the decision, I'm going to move down to Texas. So it was 20, just before my 24th birthday, birthday I decided you know what? Uh, I've wasted enough time. School's not working out. <clears throat> I'm going to go out into the world and I'm going to find my destiny. And I moved down to Texas and it's a culture shock uh, from where I grew up in New York. Uh, you know, Long Island is 70 miles wide, maybe 30 miles, you know, across. It's not the biggest place in the world, but it seems huge when you're young, you know. And then I get to Texas and it's like, exit 876, whereas like the freeway on Long Island was 70 exits. So just to kind of put in perspective, uh, just a completely different atmosphere. So I had a lot of difficulty adjusting, you know, and uh, so I spent a couple of months working with my dad. Um, the plan was, you know, in retrospect, you look back as you get older and you realize a lot of these things. Uh, and I'm getting to the whole army part, just kind of bear with me, guys. Um, I, I was kind of working with him six days a week, so it's not like I really had a chance to go out and experience things and befriend people and figure out what I wanted to do. It's like his plan was, you know, not only to kind of mend the father and son thing, but he kind of wanted, he always wanted to teach me his profession, which is contracting, uh, you know, painting, carpentry, all this stuff, I guess so that I could transition into it and kind of he could take a back seat. So, you know, in retrospect, neither one of our plans really worked out. Um, but anyway... You know, um, one time I remember uh, I'd been down there about six months, just really wasn't happy. Uh, you know, and, and I could re realistically, I could have gone back to New York, but I felt that doing that would be like I had always done, kind of taking the easy way out, you know, tucking tail like a coward and running. So I said, no, you know what? I'm going to 
either try to stick it out or try something else. And I don't know what possessed me to do it, but one day I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go to the Army recruiter. Well, I wanted to talk to the Air Force recruiter because I was fat. I was out of shape. I didn't think I could hack it physically as far as the Army. Mentally, I, I thought for sure I could do it. Uh, so I told my dad something. I don't even remember what excuse I gave him. And he kind of growled about it. And he's like, uh, whatever, you need the day off. And I went to the Army recruiter. Again, I'm sorry, the Air Force recruiter. They were closed, never there every time I went. But the Army was right across the hallway. And then also, you know, the Navy and the Marines. Now, I can't swim, so I figured Navy, that's out. Uh, Marines, I didn't think I was that tough. So I was like, that was out. Again, Air Force, I was thinking not because it's got that reputation for being a little easier. I just thought, you know, they got more bases, more options, more places you can travel to. I wanted to travel. I wanted to see the world. I wanted to do something different, even though... Houston was this huge, huge culture shock for me uh, versus <coughs> where I grew up in New York. I wanted to travel and see something different. But anyway, the Army recruiter, he would see me and he'd be like, dude, just come in for a minute. Just come talk to me. I was like, okay, cool, fine. So he was like, uh, you know, what exactly are you interested in? And I said, look, you know, maybe the Army Reserves. I, I just want to see if I got what it takes. You know, I, I'm, I'm kind of lost in life. I'm, tw I'm 24 years old. I'm kind of drifted. I've done some college, you know, some different odd jobs around. I just haven't quite found that groove. You know, I haven't quite found what I'm meant to do. Uh, and, you know, he kind of sat me down. We talked for a little while about all the different options. And, you know, he asked me, like, what career fields, you know, I'd be interested in. Uh, you know, I told him uh, one, one thing, because I've always had a, a deep respect for, you know, uh, law enforcement, because I do have family that was law enforcement. And, uh, you know, even though there is one bad apple in every bunch. I don't condemn all police. Uh, you know, I think that anyone that wants to risk their life to make their community a better place, you know, uh, I have respect for that. I'm sorry that that might offend some people too bad. Deal with it. Um, again, I don't, this channel is not about getting political or ideological, but that's something I feel very strongly about. Yes, there are bad cops, but, you know, they're such a, a low number in compared to overall. Anyway, so I thought about being a military policeman. I figured that would be something I would like because maybe after I got out of the military, it's something I could transition into. And the recruiter was kind of like, oh, you don't really want to do that. There's so many military police that, you know, pick something else. I was like, okay, well, secondary, let's see. How about a pilot? You know, uh, you know. Now in the army, obviously the only pilots you have is really like helicopter pilots. And he's like, he kind of discouraged me from that. He was like, oh, you're a little bit older, you know, maybe your eyesight's not too good. I, I thought it was kind of his nice way of saying, you know, you're too stupid to do it. You're not qualified, you know, so he, he kind of shoved me away from that. And um, he's like, well, well, something else. I was like, you know, I was still in my very young phase of writing at that point. I was like, well, how about like a, a, a journalist for the Army or like a, a combat choreographer, you know, <laughs> somebody that, that's in taking pictures and, and video, which... which admittedly is a little you know for somebody in the situation i had been a little a little out there and he kind of laughed it off he's like oh dude that that's such a small profession you don't want to do something like that so but anyway he gave me this booklet he's like go home i want you to think about it for a couple days think about the reasons you want to join you know think about what you want to do look this over and then get back to me and i and i did and i went home and i and i thought about it and um like i said there was there's a lot of reasons i joined you know, I joined for a lot of selfless, pure and noble reasons, and I did join for a lot of selfish reasons. Um, some of the selfish reasons were I was out of shape, uh, physically, mentally, you know, kind of lost, didn't know what I was doing with my life. I wanted something. I wanted to do something positive. I didn't do it for glory. I didn't do it for, hey, you know, thank you for your service or anything like that. Um, but, you know, I, I wanted to, my life to mean something. I, I wanted to do something this kind of goes away from the selfish to more the pure and noble thing. I, I wanted, not that I wanted to be a hero, because I'm not. I'm not a hero. I'm not super brave. But I wanted to do something bigger than myself. You know, uh, there's more to life than me. So that's one of the pure reasons. You know, I wanted to serve my country. And, you know, again, another selfish one. I, I wanted to see if I had what it takes, you know. Uh, horrible physical shape, kind of beat up mental shape from a lot of things I had been through. Uh, but I wanted to see if, you know, I could do it. Anyway, so I, I, you know, I went home, I thought about this, I looked over a lot of the choices and whatnot, uh, went back to him, you know, and of course I was 
still way overweight, you know. So we, we talked a lot about it, but he's like, I'm going to send you for what they call, they call an ASVAB test. Basically, you go and you sort of, it's sort of like <coughs> an aptitude test that you take. And it kind of tells the military what areas you might be proficient in, you know, what kind of skills you have, whatnot. So go and I take this test. And, you know, he's like, come back and see me the, the next day or whatever. We'll, we'll look at your results and we'll kind of help guide you toward whatever you should do from there. And I remember going into the office and he, he looks at me, he picks up the paper, he looks at me, he looks at the paper, he looks at me, he looks at the paper and he starts rubbing his chin. He's like, damn, you are never going to be a mechanic, son. He's like, a freaking trained monkey can score higher than you. And I was like, that's fine. You know, like the whole office burst into laughter, but I wasn't offended. It's like, no, I have no mechanical abilities. That's fine. I, I don't want to be a mechanic. Ironically enough, ended up sort of being like a light wheel mechanic-ish We'll get to that part in a subsequent video when, I, when I'm talking about my service in. Uh, but, you know, he said the funniest thing. He said, well, one, you have to lose a ton of weight, you know, before you can even qualify to go. N no problem. But he's like, I'm going to re recommend you for something you're not going to expect. I said, okay. He said, military intelligence. Now, for those of you who know me, you're going to laugh your ass off when you hear that. And I laughed my ass off and fell out the chair. I was like... Is the army wanting to fail? I was like, who are you, are you kidding me? He's like, no, 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 son. He's like, looking at your scores, the way your mind works, and I can testify to this because this is both my blessing and my curse. My mind runs a thousand miles a minute and I see every possible outcome. I see this whole spectrum. I've talked about this in, in a previous video, I think. It might have been my very first one. I don't know. But anyway, he said, your, 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 your critical thinking skills, your analyticals, like off the charts, you're, you'd be good at it. I was like, nah, I, I don't want to do that. Because I was really thinking more Army Reserve or National Guard, and that was like a full-time active duty. He goes, well, you have an $18,000 signing bonus, bonus, and it's like, hmm, okay, let's try that, you know. Um, so anyway, I had to lose weight. So it took me a couple weeks to, to, to get down to, to the weight level where I could even just go into the service, you know. Um, and I finally, it was hard, you know, I got, I got down that weight. Um, I remember the first time I had the conversation with my dad about it. He got so pissed, I don't think we talked for about a week. Um, in retrospect, you know, at the time, I thought it was just anger and frustration. And I'm sure part of it was, but, you know, looking back on it now, I'm sure also part of it, you know, he might have felt betrayed because he kind of wanted me to, to come down to Texas, you know, and, and have a better relationship with him. And maybe he felt like I was kind of throwing, throwing my hands up at that or betraying him, which I, which I wasn't, you know. Maybe a small part of me because we never really got along all that great, you know, at that time. But but overall, I would say no. Um, you know, and then when I told him that I ended up signing up for active duty, he kind of blew a gasket and, you know, we, we, we barely spoke before I went in. Um, mind you, going in, I was kind of a grandpa. And what I mean by that, you know, most kids, they go in right after high school, 17, 18 I was 24. I mean, I was old <laughs> going in, you know. Um, you know, like I said, uh, I, I had a, I had a hard time, not with the mental aspects, obviously with the physical aspects. I was never really a physically active kid, you know. Uh, again, I had that little silly childhood pipe dream to be a soldier, and I never took it seriously until that time, you know, and I never really told anybody because I knew they wouldn't take it seriously I won't name names, but I had several people tell me right before I left, uh, you know, we'll see you in a week. You're not going to make it. That wasn't easy to hear uh, from loved ones, you know, family and friends. Um, but I took all that and I kept it inside and I used it as an inspiration to, you know, plow through it. And I had no doubt in my mind I could hack it. I thought I'd struggle with the physical, and I and I did, I did in the beginning. But I I knew, I knew something that a lot of people don't know about me. If there's something, you know, on the surface, for those of you who know me, uh, or you know who've known me a long time or whatever, you might think I'm lazy, I'm unmotivated. It, it might seem that way, but if it's something that I love, it's something that I'm passionate about, I give it my all. I mean, I'm a hundred and ten percent. You know. In everybody else's defense at that time, I hadn't really shown that because, again, I had bounced around place to place, job to job, hadn't really found my my footing in the world just yet. So I can understand <clears throat> how people would think that, 
but you know nobody really ever saw that side of me so anyway I took that pain and, and I used it uh, as motivation so I remember I uh, finally lost the weight you know was was leaving uh, packed up my stuff and I, and I went and I flew from Houston to St. Louis Airport and then from St. Louis to um, where my my basic training was in Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. They call it Fort Lost in the Woods. It's about three hours out of St. Louis. There's literally nothing out there. So that name is very appropriate, you know. And I just think it's funny because, you know, everybody else on the bus is, you know, 17, 18, National Guard, you know, uh, Army Reserve. There was a few active duty people. But, you know, everybody's thinking, oh, man, I'm such a badass, you know, da, da, da. And I just remember we, you know, nighttime, we finally pull up to Fort Leonard Wood. And, you know, it starts to get quiet on the bus. And everybody who was a badass, not me, because I was never like that. I'm not, I'm, I'm a little modest. You might not think so by my personality, but I am really shy and modest. So I wasn't acting like, oh, I was so badass because I was in the army. You know, I was thinking about, like, the, the, the getting on the bus scene from Forrest Gump. That was what was going through my mind. Like, nobody gives a crap who you are. Get on the bus and shut up, you know. Um, of course, that's not what he said in the movie, but I'm trying to keep it G-rated, you know. So anyway, um, I just, I remember, you know, we're, we're weaving through the base and it gets quieter and quieter and it had it gotten to be about midnight at that time. And I just remember we stop and everybody's like dead silent. And you just see that, um, silhouette, like something out of a comic book, of the, you know, the hat and the drill sergeant. And it's just, it was dark, <clears throat> it was raining. And he's just slowly creeping up to the bus. And he gets on the bus. He's like, you got 30 seconds. Get your shit and get out. And it was like, everybody. And uh, you know, so here we are at midnight. We're, we're arriving for basic training, you know. Um, anyway, I'm going to stop the video now. Because basic training is something I could definitely, you know, make a whole another 20 minutes or so video on. Uh, I just kind of wanted to give you guys an introduction as to some of the reasons I joined the Army. I mean, there's a lot more than that. I, I just can't, no, but nothing's really coming to my mind, uh, you know, at the moment. Um, like I said, honestly, guys, I, I just, I've had a lot of personal things I've been dealing with the last couple of days. So um, it's kind of crossed the wires a little bit. My emotions are a little haywire at the moment. So uh, just not, I, I, I've been trying, I meant to get back into doing a video, not necessarily this topic, but I meant to get back to doing a video yesterday. I was just so tired uh, just with everything going on lately. Um, anyway. Uh, we will continue the Army discussion in another video. Uh, I'm going to do one about basic training, one about job training in airborne school, one about my duty station. And actually, the first ever quote-unquote video I did was with my best friend from the Army a uh, couple, well, going on two months ago, we were talking about September 11th. Uh, I was in the Army uh, station at Fort Bragg on September 11th, so we... Uh, we just had this little like 30, 40 minute video that we uh, chat where we talked about it for, for the channel that he's a part of. Uh, View Change, I believe it's called. It's just veterans empowerment. Uh, just, you know, looking out for each other. Uh, the veteran community is very tight knit, uh, generally speaking, but at the same time, we can feel very much alone. Uh, anyway, that that's that, that's a whole video for another time. But uh, like I said, this is the first one in, in the series about my army time. Uh, again, not something I really talk about, but by the end, you'll, you'll probably understand why. Uh, I thank you guys for bearing with me the last couple days where I haven't had anything. I thank you guys for always watching my videos. Uh, if you do enjoy them, please subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so you know if I do post a new video, like them, give me some comments. I'd love to hear from you guys, and I will see you in the next video. Good to talk to you guys again.